Now turn in your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter number 2. Very, 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 very familiar passage. Second Timothy, chapter number two. One verse. Verse number 15. Uh-huh, it is. You there? Who, Jesus. The scripture says, can I read the Bible? Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. A workman, somebody say workman, that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth let's pray father god we thank you we praise the lord for how awesome you are and how you how good you've already been how you're blessed already this morning we ask father god now that you just might, might have your way and let your spirit god flow through me that your people may be blessed through your word Deliver it the way you want it. And we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Invest in yourself and study. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Study. Church, would you go to a so-called medical doctor? Someone who called themselves a medical doctor who wasn't prepared or equipped to manage your care. Didn't know how to take a temperature. Didn't know how to take your blood pressure. Didn't know how to check your sugar levels. Didn't know how to check your oxygen levels. Didn't know how to even just read your chart. Would you go to a medical doctor who did not know what he or she was doing? Never went to medical school? Now, never done a residency? Never taken a static medical exam? Would you go? Would you go and let them examine you? What would they be looking for? Would you take the medication that they prescribe for you? What in the world is it at? Would you trust their recommendations? Would you put your life in their hands? Absolutely not. Why? Because they don't know what they're doing. They are clueless. They, are, they, they may sound good. They may look good. They may talk good. They may talk and look professional. They may look like a doctor, act like a doctor, talk like a doctor, walk like a doctor. But guess what? They ain't not a doctor. Why? Because they are not prepared. Not equipped, not knowledgeable, not ready. They don't know what they need to know to take care of their patients. They don't know what they need to know to take care of the clients. They don't know what they need to know to do what's best for the patient. They don't know what they need to know to give sound medical advice. They don't know what they need to know to give medical recommendations. They don't even know what they don't know. You'll get that out the way. They don't even know what they don't know. They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are saying. They don't know what they are prescribing. They don't know 
what's on what your chart is saying why because they are not prepared they are not ready they are not prepared to serve they are not prepared to serve they are not equipped to serve they are not ready to serve they may have a desire they may have the heart they may even have a calling on their lives to serve as a physician but unless they are prepared unless they are prepared unless they are prepared they will never be what God has called them and destined them to be they will never be what they were born to be not because they weren't called to do it but because they never prepared themselves for it not because God didn't want to use them in it but because they never prepared for it. In other words, you can be called to do something that you never get prepared to do. Not because you weren't called, but because you never accepted it and prepared for it. So to, today God sent me here to tell somebody to invest in yourself. For in our text we find the Apostle Paul writing a letter to his son in the ministry named Timothy. Young Timothy was a preacher of the gospel. Paul knew that the young preacher was struggling. Timothy had some health problems. Timothy had some family challenges growing up without his father. Timothy was a young man trying to minister to people who was twice, at least twice, sometimes three times his age. So Timothy was called, anointed and appointed by God, but he was struggling. So Paul sent his final letter to his spiritual son to encourage him as he faced the challenges of life and ministry. How many know you're going to have challenges in life and in ministry? Uh -huh. As we look at the text, one of the uh, instructions that Paul gave his spiritual son Timothy to carry out his assignment was to simply study. Tell your neighbor, study. One of the directives that, uh, uh, that, that Paul gave Timothy as he to carry out the will of God uh, for his life was to simply study. Tell your other neighbor, study. Yeah, 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 study, study, to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, if you are going to do what God has called you to do, you can't just start doing it. I can't just go out there and start doing it. No, why? Because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you know, need to know. And if God has called you to something, one of the things you must do to be effective in it to be effective to be a effective you can have the, the title and not be effective you can have the office but not be effective you can have the following but still not be effective you can have the folks trust in you but not be effective why because effectiveness requires more than God's anointing it also requires equipping yeah. Uh -huh. We have to be equipped to be effective. And Timothy, if you want to be used by God, you have to study. Somebody just shout study. Yeah. Invest in yourself and study. 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 Go and find out what you don't know. Study. Go and find out what you don't know. Study. I know your father wasn't there for you growing up, but that's okay. God is still with you. Study. Go and find out what you don't know. I know you have some health problems and some health challenges, but God is still with you. Study and go find out what you don't know. Don't use what you didn't have as your excuse. Study. Go and find out what you don't know. Don't use what you're going through as your excuse. No, study and go find out what you don't know. Don't use who wasn't there for you as your excuse. Study. Go find out what you don't know. In other words, invest in yourself. 
not for food not for selfish reasons not for self-promotion not for self-glorification not for selfish gain not so you can tell uh, people how great you are not so you can show off and tell people how much you know no not so you can get consumed with pride and walk around like a proud peacock no no but invest your in yourself number one number one that's all we're gonna get to today is number one invest in yourself so God can use you so God can use you for the text of class study to show thyself approved unto who unto God study be diligent prepare yourself invest in yourself that, so that you can present yourself as a workman a servant who is prepared and has God's anointing and approval but you won't be effective with his approval uh, unless you're studying somebody say study whatever you are called to do however However, we're not just talking about preaching. However, however you are called to serve. If you want to be effective and used by God, you have to study. Invest in yourself. You can't pick up his word once a year. Once a month. Once a week. What's What's the scripture this morning, Pastor? And know what you need to know. You can't share God's plan for salvation. You can't share God's plan for marriage. You can't share God's plan for manhood. You can't share God's plan for womanhood. You can't share God's plan for fatherhood and motherhood and pastoring and being a deacon, a parent, a partner, a fellowship, or abundant living unless you study. Nobody taught me how to be a good man. Nobody taught me how to be a good woman. Nobody taught me how to be a good husband. Nobody taught me how to be a good wife. Nobody taught me how to be a good father. Nobody taught me how to be a good mother. Nobody taught me how to communicate. Nobody taught me how to deal with my problems. And nobody taught me how you just gonna fill in the blank. Question. How many books have you read on it? books have you read on what you say nobody taught you how to do how many books have you read the subject that you say nobody taught you because if you need to know then you need to know and if you need to know you need to go find out what you don't know question how many classes have you taken have you read by people who have already done successfully 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 what you're trying to do already accomplished what you are trying to accomplish already overcome what you're trying to overcome they already done it they can probably give you some wise counsel on, on what you need to do too you can't always expect folk to invest in you. Because half the time they don't even know what you're going through because you ain't saying nothing. I'm going to keep myself in isolation. Don't tell nobody nothing and then be mad because nobody coming to help me. You can't always expect folk to do it for you. How many know sometimes God wants you to just do it for yourself? Somebody say study. Pick up God's word and study. Pick up a book that will teach you what you don't know and study. Go to a class that you would that will teach you what you don't know and study. Spend some time with God alone and study. Invest.
success in yourself so God can use you. You want to be a better Christian? Study. You want to be a better man? Study. You want to be a better woman? Study. You want to be a better husband? Study. If you want to be a better wife? Study. You want to be a better father? Study. You want to be a better mother? Study. You want to be a better partner? Study. You want to be a better parent? Study. You want to open up your own business? Study. You want to own your own stuff? Study. You want to be a blessing? To others, you gotta study. I know it's rough, ain't it? You wanna tell it's tough about me. You wanna be effective in what God has called you to be. It ain't just gonna drop out the sky. If it was gonna drop out the sky, then Paul would have never told Timothy to study. Invest in yourself. So God can use you, so God can use you, so God can use what you learn to bless someone else. So God can use what you learn to save someone else. So God can use what you learn to save somebody else's life. So God can use what you learn to strengthen somebody else's marriage. So God can use what you learn to make somebody else a better husband or wife. So God can use what you learn to make somebody else a better father or mother. So God can use what you learn to make your house and somebody else's house happy. To make your home a home filled with love joy and peace so God can use what you learn to help you raise your children and, and in the nurture and admonition of the Lord so God can use what you learn to help you love your wives as Christ loved the church me and husbands and respect your husbands and to the Lord wives oh how many know that God would do his part but we also have to do our part Timothy was called, anointed, and appointed to be used by God. But Paul still told him to study. Paul still told Timothy to invest in himself. Why? Because in order for God to use you, you have to know what you're talking about. In order for God to use you, you have to be anointed and prepared. Timothy, I know you're anointed. Timothy, I know you're appointed. Timothy, I know God wants to use you. But if you want to be effective in what God has called you to do, you have to be willing to invest in yourself and study. Invest in yourself so God can use you. For Philippians 4, 30, 13, y'all know the text. It says, I can do all things through Christ that what? Strengthens me. That what? Strengthens me. That what? Strengthens me. That means what? He gives me what? The strength. The strength. He gives me the strength. But I gotta go get the knowledge. He gives me the strength to go get the knowledge. He provides the strength for me to go learn what I don't know. He provides the strength for me to learn what I need to learn so I can do what he's called me to do. Timothy, you have to invest in yourself and study. Why? Because you gotta give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Lord help me right here you gotta you gotta give the Holy Ghost something to work with you have to give the Holy Ghost something to pull from <laughs> for Jesus said in John 14 26 that the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance to your remembrance when, when you need a word when you need a direction Jesus said that the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance but he can't bring to your remembrance what ain't never been remembered he can't bring to your remembrance what you never learned he can't bring to your remembrance 
remembrance what you've never studied. He can't bring to your remembrance what you've never seen, heard, read, or studied. He can't bring up what ain't ever been put in. No. You have to invest in yourself and study. See, too many people use for excuses. Plenty of books on it, you ain't picked up now. Plenty, you, plenty of books on it, people who've done it. I'm going to just let the Lord lead me. He won't, he going to lead you. He tell you now to study. Pick up a book, find out how to do what you're trying to do. You'll be a better man when you read books about manhood. You'll be a better woman if you read books about women. You'll be a better mother, father, husband, wife when you study the subject matter. How do you walk in what you don't know? And then get mad when I, well, it just ain't working, it just ain't working. Well, how much time did you spend preparing for what you're walking in? Well, if I find out later, if I just found out, well, you can start right now. Because it's never too late to get mad. Well, Pastor, my children are grown and grown. That's fine, but guess what? They got children, they gonna have grandchildren, and maybe your contribution is to learn it and help them teach them when maybe you didn't know yourself. So now they have a better chance to do it a little bit better. It's always, it's never too late to be a blessing. Somebody say study. Holy Ghost can't pull up when ain't been put in. You have to invest in yourself, study, oh, because when you invest in yourself, God can and will use you. He'll use you to bless your family. He'll use you to bless your coworkers. He'll use you to bless folk you don't even know. He'll raise up stuff in your spirit. He'll bring things to you. Remember, he'll lay stuff on your heart. Can I get a witness? He'll tell you exactly what to say. He'll tell you exactly what to do. He'll tell you which step to take. He'll tell you where to go. He'll tell you what move to make. He'll give you peace about a problem before the problem's even resolved. Oh, he'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. You still, you still steal a song, but you laughing because you know you got the victory. I'm still in this bad boy, but I know I'm blessed. God gonna bring me out. I don't know how he gonna bring me out, but he's giving me peace about it. And it's all good. It ain't got to look good because I know it's all good. You might not understand it, but I already know it because there's something in my spirit that tells me all is well. He'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. He'll bless you and use you in the city. He'll bless you and use you in the field. He'll bless you and use you when you come. He'll bless you and use you when you go. Why? Because you are equipped not just to be blessed by God, but also to be used by God. For even as we celebrate in honor of veterans today, this week, Guess what? Every one of them had to learn how to be an effective soldier. They had to learn how to use the military equipment. They had to learn how to drive the tanks. They had to learn how to fly the plane. They had to learn how to live inside of a submarine and underwater. They had to learn how to, uh, to monitor the U.S. airspace. They had to learn how to launch the missiles. They had to learn. They are and were effective soldiers because they learned what they didn't know. They invested in themselves and studied to be effective soldiers that they were called to be. And if we're going to be effective in the army of the Lord, we got to stop making excuses and go and study. We must take heed to Paul's instruction to study. We must invest in ourselves and study so God can use us in our home, use us in our marriages, use us to raise our children, use us in the classroom, use us on the job, use us to get the work done, use us to get folks saved so God can use us to get children to college, strengthen marriages, strengthen men, strengthen women, strengthen the husband, strengthen wives, run our operation and 
and honor God, own and operate our own businesses and honor God. Why? Because investing in yourself and studying not only causes you to be a blessed by God, but it also causes you to be used by God. Invest in yourself. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Somebody say unto God. Be very clear, this ain't about you, this is about him. It's about you being the best you so you can honor him. It's about you doing the best so you can honor him. It ain't about you telling people how much you know. It's about you being equipped and knowledgeable to bless folks' lives for his glory. Invest in yourself, study it. Find out what you don't know. Study to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Study so the Holy Ghost can bring things back to your remembrance. Study so you can know what God says instead of listening to what folks say. Study so you can know what God expects from you. Because whether or not you and whether he won't acknowledge it or not, when you stand before him, he has expectations. And we all got to answer before God what we did in the body that he gave us. It's not your body. You didn't make it. You don't even keep yourself alive. When you sleep, you don't know what's going on. It's only by the grace of God. And one day everybody is going to answer to the one who did. This is my life. I do what I want to do. Tell God that when you open your eyes and stand before him. Uh Uh-huh. Study. So you will know what the will of God is for your life. Study so you can build your life on his word. Why? (laughs) Dr. Darius Daniels says this well. God is not obligated to back your word. He's only obligated to back his word. In other words, uh, he ain't obligated to back what you say. Because we, we can say all kind of stuff. We lie on God all the time. Talking about the Lord told me to do this. And when it don't work, you say, well, the Lord didn't tell me that. He told me, why well, don't you say he told you to do this? So either you lie then or you lie now. Somewhere's a lie somewhere because God didn't change his mind. God ain't got to back what you say. God only backs what he says. And when you in line with what he says, you ain't got to worry about it because God's going to have your back. So, so, prepare yourself. Yeah, so, so, you can be who God called you to be so you can do what God called you to do so you can say what God called you to say and you can enjoy what God has ordained for you to enjoy so you won't be like the doctor that don't know what they doing so you won't be the man or the woman who don't know what they're doing the husband or the wife who don't know what they're doing the father or mother who don't know what they doing the church leader or officer that don't know what they doing. The teacher, the counselor, the coach, the doctor, the lawyer, the business owner that don't know what they're doing. How many know God wants you to know what you're doing? Listen. If you represent him, don't you know? Let me, let me, listen, listen, listen. Come on closer, come on. Let, if you're representing God, don't you think he wants you to know what you're doing? If, if, if I'm doing it for his glory, if I'm doing it so that he can get the credit, if I'm representing his name, don't you think he wants us to know what we're doing? Let's be very clear. You ain't gonna be perfect. None of us gonna be perfect. We just gonna be some messes along the way. But we can be prepared. 
so that we can at least have an idea of what we, God wants us to know what we're doing no matter what we didn't have no matter what we were not taught no matter what we have been through that's why he told Timothy and each of us to invest in ourselves and study study so we can be prepared to be used by God come on give God praise Lord help us understand the call to preparation the call to study the call to invest in ourselves that we will learn what we don't know to be better people better partners better parents better professionals better leaders help us learn to invest in ourselves and study so we can be used by you father we thank you for this word today the challenge that you've given us the challenge that you've given us because we all have areas in our lives that you're leading us to thank you father god that we now know we have a responsibility to study in whatever area in whatever area in whatever area you want us to operate in father God give us a mindset to study if you want us to start our business blessed lives father God whatever it is God give us a mind to study if you want us to help children, Father God, help them transition from one stage of life to another. Help us, God, to study that we might give them effective, actual, prompt information. If our assignment is to counsel, if our assignment is to counsel marriages or counsel men or counsel women or, or counsel young adults, Father God, give us a mind to study. If our assignment is to be financial advisors and help people manage their money to your glory, give us a mind to study. That we might be the help that you've ordained us to be that we might minister lives the way you've ordained us to be and that we may make you smile because of the effectiveness of the work because when your anointing connects with preparation great things will happen Father God there are those here who have received this word today who are going to commit to study first of all study of your word but second of all study of the subject matter that you're leading us to give us father God the strength the wisdom the courage the time management that is going to require that we might be able to invest in ourselves that we might be used by you we love you and we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen if you receive that word come on give god praise amen amen i surrender all